This is the Zendek. It's a handheld gaming PC that I've spent most of my spare time and brain power designing and building this year. In the last video I built the first prototype and tested some games on it, so I thought while I wait for the next revision of the parts to turn up, it might be a good time to test out one of the many SteamOS style Linux distros that are available. For as long as I've been making handheld PC content, I've had constant comments asking me to try it Linux. I did give it a go on my previous handheld, the NUC Deck, but since it used an older Intel system I found there just wasn't any driver support in the distro as I tried, so I never had much luck getting them running. Since the Zendek is using a relatively modern AMD APU, we should have much better luck, so I've decided to load up one of the most popular options, Bayzite OS, and give it a go. Some of my past experiences with Linux haven't always aligned with a lot of the claims the comment section have been making in regards to improved performance and battery life over Windows. While I'm sure that might be the case with the Steam Deck, on hardware that hasn't specifically been designed for this platform, it could be a bit of a different story. So in order to test these theories, Here's the plan. I've installed a spare SSD into the Zendek and I've loaded it with the most recent version of Bazite OS. I've picked out a couple of games that have built-in benchmarks to ensure that the tests are as consistent as possible, and I'm going to install them on both Windows and Linux. I'll run the benchmarks with my trusty watt meter connected to measure the watt hours of capacity consumed during the test on each platform. I've got three games in total which range in difficulty for the Zendek to run. My options were a bit limited as not all games include a built-in benchmarking option but I wanted to stick to titles I own on Steam, so I've settled on Dirt 3 as our easy to run option, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor as our medium difficulty option, and finally I've got Forza Horizon 4 as my difficult to run title. Since each game offers varying degrees of information in their benchmarks, we are just going to pay attention to the average and minimum FPS for this test. Let's start off with Dirt 3. I'm using the low preset at the native display resolution. I've got VSync turned off for the first test so we can measure the overall performance. Then I'm repeating the test with VSync on to see how the power consumption compares when we are limited to the FPS the display can actually make use of. In order to measure power consumption somewhat accurately, I've picked a beginning and end point for each of the benchmarks that I can easily identify in video, and I'm simply subtracting the starting amp power value from the final value shown to calculate how much power was used. These tests are all different lengths, so the actual power consumption between games isn't comparable, but it should at least give us something to compare between the two systems within the same game. And here's the results. With VSync off, Linux managed a higher average and minimum FPS than Windows did. It has used about 22% more power to get these results though. Unsurprisingly, when I turn VSync on, both systems hover at around the same FPS result, but Windows has consumed around 35% less power to achieve the same results as Linux. Next up is Shadow of Mordor. This game has the option of rendering at a reduced scale, but for the first test, I've set the render resolution to 100%, low presets, and VSync is off. Our Linux test managed an average FPS of 80.35, with a minimum of 60.5, whilst Windows managed a slightly lower average of 77.6 and a minimum of 60.8. This benchmark is quite short compared to the last one, so the difference in power consumption isn't as great, but Linux still used 11% more power than Windows did. For the second test, I decreased render scale to 70% and turned VSync on to more accurately represent how I would play the game. Again, the average and minimum FPS between the two systems is obviously pretty much identical, and Linux still used about 10.5% more power compared to Windows running the same test. And finally, here's Forza Horizon 4. I've used the high preset with VSync off to try and put a heavy load on the system. The benchmark results in this game are pretty confusing, so I've decided to just pick the GPU render results. I don't really know how this compares to the actual frames that make it to the display, but I'll be reading the same results from both tests, so it should at least provide us with a comparison. And yet again, Linux comes out on top for performance on this one, managing an average of 61.4 FPS with a minimum of 51.4, whilst Windows managed 42.8 and 38.7 respectively. Windows did come out on top for power consumption again though, using almost 17% less power than Linux for the same test. For the second test, I changed the preset to low and turned VSync on to better represent how I would play the game. This result was so drastically different that I had to rerun this test too, just to make sure. Linux managed a staggering 89 FPS average and 63.5 minimum, whilst Windows only managed 57.3 and 52.7 respectively. Obviously, these numbers aren't the actual FPS that are making it to the display, since VSync should have capped both the tests at the 60 FPS mark. But nevertheless, Linux is definitely on top for performance with this test too, and unsurprisingly Windows managed about the same 17% decrease in power consumption. 
Overall, it seems like Linux has a bit of a lead over Windows in regards to performance as it managed to consistently outperform Windows in all of our uncapped tests. Interestingly, Windows did use less power in every test I performed and sometimes by a substantial amount. My take home from these tests is that for running games that are close to the limits of the system, Linux is the winner for performance. But if you want to make most of your battery life and have a game that Windows can handle easily, you'll get a bit more runtime out of the system on Windows. My overall experience with Bazite OS was pretty good. Everything worked straight out of the box with only one exception, the touchscreen. For some reason, in desktop mode, the touchscreen functions perfectly, but touching it when in gaming mode prompts the system to restart every time, even if you're in a game. This is obviously hugely annoying as if you accidentally bump the screen, you're met by a blank screen as the OS restarts and you lose your progress in whatever game you're playing at the time. This also means you can't use the touchscreen for text input, which is a huge downside. I've had a brief look through the Bazite GitHub page and I haven't been able to find anyone else complaining of crashes from interacting with the touchscreen. So it's likely only an issue with this specific display, so it may be difficult to get them to fix it. For now, I think I'll just stick with Windows whilst I finish off the build, but it's good to know that gaming on Linux is now not only possible, but in some cases better than it is on Windows. Before I go, I need to again thank PCBWay for sponsoring this project. PCBWay have played a vital role in getting this project started, so if you need any PCBs, 3D printing, or even machining and sheet metal fabrication done, make sure you check them out at the link in the video description. Thanks for watching guys, there's still plenty of this project to come, so if you're enjoying the series, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future updates. See you next time.